This is video number five in the Craftsman 150 rebuild series. If you haven't seen video number four, click the link at the top of the screen. In this video, we're going to be polishing most of the parts. I realize that most people don't have access to a metal lathe, but this is how I do it and I wanted to show the process. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. At the end of part four, we placed our disassembled Jacob's Chuck in a citric acid bath. It's been 24 hours, so we're now going to rinse off and remove the Jacob's Chuck parts from the citric acid. Now, all that black you see on them, that's pitting. So it's going to be fun to clean them up. Next, we're just going to dry them off like we did everything else. And then we're going to coat all the parts of the Jacob's Chuck in the WD-40. And once again, the WD-40 is not a permanent solution. It's a temporary solution to keep the parts from rusting. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be polishing is going to be the spindle pulley assembly. So I'm going to polish the shaft first and then I'm going to polish the pulley. So I don't want to take off too much material since this is sized for bearings to fit it. So I'm going to use 400 wet sand grit and I'll go from 400 to 600 to 800 to 1000 and I'm just lightly touching it And again, this is just cosmetic. This is not necessary. If you're rebuilding a 150 or a 100, you do not have to do this. It's just what I do when I rebuild them. And they certainly didn't come from the factory polished. And just like the column between each grit of wet sandpaper, we will be wiping down the item before we go to the next grit. Uh, we do the 600. And wet it, wipe it down. And then 800 grit. Now, if you do have a metal lathe uh, and you're, you feel safe working around it, you know, you can certainly do this, but this is spinning at a very high rate of speed. I think I've got it set up right now for 600 RPM. And it is not for the faint of heart. If you do decide to do this, just make sure that you keep a light grasp on the sandpaper or the rags or whatever you're using so that if something on the lathe grabs it, It'll come out of your hand and not drag you into the lathe. All right. That's all we're going to do for that shaft. Now notice those splines. The bottom, I don't know, probably about bottom inch and a half to two inches of this shaft 
has the splined end. The rest of the shaft is just hollow. So I'm going to be polishing the inside of it in the smooth part of that shaft, not where the splines are. So we're just going to reverse it now on the chuck. And I'm just getting that lip lined up with the jaws. And there we go. No? All right. There we go. And we're good. So since the aluminum is a very rough casting, uh, I start with 80 grit. Um, we're not so concerned about how much material we take off on the pulleys. They're not, you know, precision machined. So uh, we'll hit them with 80. And in a second here, I'll grab a wooden dowel and do the inside of the bore. Here we go. So I'm just wrapping, it's a, I don't know, half inch wind dowel, maybe a little bit smaller. And then I'm just running along the edge on the inside of that bore, all the way down to where the splines start. There's a lip down there so you can feel where the splines start. And then we're just going to polish in between each sheave or sand between each sheave with the 80 grit. And that rubber sponge that I'm using, that's just a roughly a half inch thick piece of uh, like floor rubber that you put like in a kid's playroom. You can buy those mats at like Harbor Freight or whatever. I just cut them into blocks and use them for sanding blocks. And here we are at 100 grit. Basically the exact same process. And then 120. And then 220. And it's cleaning up pretty nice. As you get closer to the chuck, you got to be a little bit more careful. So now we're at wet sanding. So 320 is where we're going to start. I'm going to continue to do the inside of the bore. the rest of the pulley and just like on the column just keep wetting the sandpaper and we will be rinsing and wiping down the pulley between each grit. And 
So that's me wiping down the inside of the bore. And then the pulley itself. And then we're going to 400 grit. exact same procedure inside the bore a lot of repetition when it comes to sanding and then the pulley itself but don't take any shortcuts Go through the whole process. Uh, if you will want the results to look good, you got to go through it. And here we are at 600 grit. And 800 grit. And a thousand grit. Now you can polish up to, you know, 2,500, but I just go to a thousand because the, uh, the mother's mag and aluminum polish is going to do the magic here. Right now, this has got a kind of a satin finish to it, and it's not at a high shine. Uh, it doesn't look chrome or anything like that. But once we hit it with that mag and aluminum polish, it'll look like chrome. So we're just going to find a clean spot on this rag. The sham wow. And then apply the polish. And then buff it. Now, some of this stuff, if you have another drill press or even just a hand drill in a vise, you could probably do. But uh, most people's jaws on their on their drill press or on their hand drills doesn't open up wide enough to hold something like this. So you really need a, a lathe to do it on. And in case you're wondering, this is a smithy lathe. It's actually a combo. It's a lathe and a milling machine. And this one's specifically designed for gunsmithing, but it's a Chinese made lathe. It's not anything special. You can pick them up used for less than a thousand dollars probably. Um, and the Harbor Freight ones are probably a step or two down from this quality, but this is good enough quality to be able to to thread with. So that's that's all I need. Okay, so now we're going to work on the motor pulley, and that's a piece of five eighths bar stock, which is the same size as the shaft on the motor. So we'll just affix the pulley to it. And then put the set screw in. Okay. 
and we would polish this pulley just like we did the last pulley start with 80 grit work our way up however if you remember this pulley was bent so I'm using a brass rod and a brass tip hammer and I'm just tapping those bends to get them back in line. The pulley doesn't have to be super accurate. It just has to be really, you know, look fairly square. So 80 grit. And just like the other pulley. We'll go through the whole gamut. All the way up to polishing it. And then... We're going to reverse this pulley because the motor pulley actually sits opposite the spindle pulley. So the largest sheave is going to be facing up, which means you would see this end of the pulley if you look on top of the motor. So I'm going to polish that outer lip of it. So again, we would go from 80 all the way up to 1,000 and then polish it. But that's both the pulleys polished now. Next, we're going to be cleaning up the spindle. Now, this is another item that we do not want to take a bunch of material off. You have bearings that slide down on this spindle. And for every inaccuracy in the spindle, you're going to have inaccuracy in the end result of the holes you drill. So, all I'm doing is hitting this with 600, then 800, and then 1,000. I'm just bringing the outer edge of it to a polish. And then I apply the mag and aluminum polish to it and polish it up. And we're good to go. And we're not going to polish the splined end of it. Next, we've got the quill. Same thing. We are going to be taking off very little here, so we will only be using the 600, 800, and 1,000 grit sandpaper. And we will not be polishing anything on the inside of the quill because those bearings actually sit on the inside. We want to make sure they have a, a nice tight fit. So we're just touching it up and then... We polish it, like I said, 600, 800, and 1,000 grit. All of it wet sandpaper. And we're just bringing the outer edge of it to a nice shine. And then the polish. And we didn't polish anything inside there. I'm just getting some of that gunk out of it. And that's the quill. Next.
next we've got the pinion. So the pinion, it's not as big of a deal. It doesn't have to have a real tight tolerance, but still, I'm only going to hit it with the 600, the 800, and the 1000 grit. We're not going to polish the inside of it, just the outside. And that's the pinion. Next, we've got the rods for the motor mount. And again, we're only going to be taking off just a little bit. So I think I started off with 400 on these instead of 600, but 400, 600, 800, and 1,000, and then the polish. just get the polish out of that slit on the end there same thing for the second rod four hundred six hundred eight hundred and a thousand and then the polish And then we're going to be putting the spindle back inside the lathe to work on the chuck. So we're just going to spin the chuck body safety lock collar onto the thrust collar that's on the spindle. Then we'll tighten it down with that gear wrench, spanner wrench. So for the chuck body, we are going to be sanding it from 80 grit all the way up, except that very center uh, neck. We're not going to uh, sand it until we get to the wet sanding because we want to make sure that the sleeve still has a nice, good, tight fit. So we did 80 all the way to 1,000 grit, and then we applied the polish, and there it is. Now the chuck, you can notice, has a lot of holes and uh, edges on it, so it can be challenging to polish it and sand it. All right, so we're over at the wire wheel on my grinder and we're going to be cleaning up the teeth that are on the sleeve for the chuck. And all I'm doing is just running the teeth through the wire wheel. Again, it got 80 grit all the way up to 1,000, and then the polish. I may have even used the angle grinder with the Scotch-Brite wheel on it, but I'm done with it. All right, next we're going to be doing the knobs, and I've got an old feed handle rod off a drill press that was broken. So I use it as the blank for the knobs whenever I clean up the knobs. And we're just gonna spin the knobs on there. And then we're gonna set up the lathe to run opposite so they don't come undone. And we're gonna do 400, 600, 800 wet sanding 
thousand and then instead of the mag and aluminum polish we will be using the Meguiar's plastic cleaner and polish And just like the metal, we wipe it down with a wet rag between each grit. And then we apply the Meguiar's cleaner and polish to it. And then we'll just buff it off and we'll do this for all three knobs. So, and then if, if your knobs are really chewed up or nicked or something like that, you might want to start with a lower grit sandpaper, but these looked pretty decent from the get-go. So I think this is going to wrap up part five. I've got the footage already shot for part six, so I'll start the voiceover on it uh, this weekend and hopefully get both of these out the start of next week. So if you found this helpful or enjoyed it, please like or subscribe. I appreciate the support. Thanks for the interest, and I will see you next time.